Hello and welcome to this Bridge Tech Academy training video. In this video we're going to be looking at Secure Reliable Transport, SRT. Now this protocol allows anybody to reliably stream live video over the internet. Now it's not going to be an in-depth dive into SRT itself. It's more about how to set up a Bridge Tech probe to receive and analyze, monitor an SRT stream. Okay. So let's get on and have a look. First, let's do a brief overview of how SRT works. So it's a low latency alternative to RTMP and it's designed to be used over the public internet, which of course is a noisy network. It's an open source protocol and it was developed by High Vision. It combines the speed of UDP in terms of multicasting, but it has the error correcting cap capabilities of TCP, which enable lost packets to be recovered. And this is key because it makes it really useful for live TV and other broadcasting applications. And also, because of the way it's designed, it simplifies the traversing of firewalls, enabling users to cross firewalls when it's necessary. It also offers AES encryption, and this protects content across the public internet. Now, there's lots of documentation available describing how SRT works, and I've included a link to the SRT Alliance deployment guide, and you'll find that link in the description below. It's a very comprehensive guide, and it contains all the information necessary to get your SRT streams up and running. So what am I going to be using? I'll show you the equipment and software that I've used setting up this demonstration. I'm just using a PC to play out an SRT stream directly into my probe. For this demonstration, I'm using my personal Nomad Portable Probe, and it's running 6.1 software. Now this is really important because 6.1 is the earliest version that supports SRT monitoring. It's a standard feature, so there's no option licenses need to be bought, and all of our software and hardware probes will monitor SRT streams as long as they're running the latest software. And it's worth noting at this point that at the time of making this video, a single probe can monitor up to four SRT streams. In order to send my SRT streams, I'm just using an Intel Nuke running Windows 11. The software I'm using is TS Duck. It's free to use and the download link is also in the description below. It will run on Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Although if you are using Mac OS, you'll need to download and install Homebrew first. Now, let's see how we set up a probe. Transmitters and receivers of SRT streams can be set up in one of three ways. They can be set up as a caller, a listener, or both the sender and the receiver set to rendezvous mode. Now, generally speaking, your encoders or video players will be set up as callers, and the receivers, including my Nomad, would normally be set up as a listener. If you need to traverse the firewall at either end, then the receiver and the sender should be configured as rendezvous. Now, don't be confused with listener and caller. They're not the same as sender and receiver. The encoder or the video server will always be the sender and the probe, in our case, will always be the receiver. But the sender and receiver can be either a listener or a caller. Caller and listener does not refer to sender and receiver. All the caller is, is the device that sets up the SRT session. And the listener then becomes the device that asks to join this session. I'll demonstrate that later in the video, but it's useful to remember that the sender is usually the caller. That just makes more logical sense. And the receiver is usually the listener. The other thing to remember is that the listener must be set up first before the caller is activated. So in other words, my probe needs to be listening for the SRT stream before the sender can actually make that call become the caller. If the receiver's not listening, then the sender has no one to call and the uh, caller session basically it quickly times out. Here you can see the physical setup of the kit. It's very, very simple. I've just got an Intel Nook, 
and the output of the NUC is connected directly to the data port of my Nomad. The blue Ethernet cable just goes to my PC so that I can record the GUI. So now I'm going to set my Nomad up as a listener, ready to receive the SRT stream from the PC. You can see that I'm in the multicast tab and I go to the tab and add a new multicast. I'm going to give the stream a name, but the multicast and port itself, they don't matter. So just accept whatever the pro presents. Click join stream and then select the join interface. And as we saw earlier, my SRT stream is coming in on the data interface. That's all I need to do on the general tab. So now I go to the SRT tab. First I need to enable the stream and I need to set the probe up as a listener. The only other parameter I need to enter at this stage is the port number. As the stream won't be encrypted right now, we don't need to worry about a passphrase. The last item to configure is the latency. Now on a probe, you can't set the latency below 120 milliseconds. And the reason for the latency is to create a buffer. It's this buffer that enables these packets to be retransmitted if necessary and still maintain the uninterrupted error-free video. The latency should normally be set to four times the round trip time. Now obviously I've got a cable running between my transmitter and receiver and my round trip delay is only a millisecond or so. Nevertheless, 120 milliseconds is still quite a short delay in a live video stream. And remember, the listener must be set to act active before the caller starts. Right now, the probe will see no data on this SRT stream until I start the sender. If I now go to the Windows PC, I'll start my SRT stream running using TS Duck. Now, I've already got the video file on the PC. I don't want to go into all the details of TS Duck as it's quite a sophisticated app and it's capable of multiple functions. I'm interested, of course, in sending an SRT stream. The first parameter of note is telling the app that we need to format the file as a transport stream and it needs to know the full path name to the file. We need to make sure that the bitrate is adequate for the bitrate of the file and then we need to actually tell the app that we want an SRT stream. Next, we set the PC as a caller, and then we need to set the IP address and the port of the destination. In other words, the IP address of Nomad's data port. These are the main parameters for this demo. Then I hit return and set it running. As the Nomad is the listener, and it's listening on port 1024, it immediately starts to receive the stream. You can see it looks much like any other multicast with minimum, maximum bit rates, net bit rates and other parameters you'd expect to see. You can also see we have a bit rate between 10 and 11 megabits per second. You can look at the detailed monitoring and see all the PIDs in the transport stream. This looks exactly like any other transport stream. We can decode thumbnails and look at the video and audio information. And its analysis of the stream is exactly the same as an analysis of any other multicast. Now, if I scroll the data to the right, there's a very useful measurement right at the end. It's the round trip time. You can see just over a millisecond. This is a useful measurement as it will give you an idea of the real world round trip delay and enable you to set a sensible latency. Of course, this data would also be used very useful in setting up an actual video receiver's latency setting. As you can see, all of the multicast functions and monitoring media window work in exactly the same way. Now I'm going to enable ETR monitoring on this stream. Remember, this is a standard MPEG transport stream encapsulated into SRT. Now the probe forms a full ETR290 analysis on this transport stream. Just a quick look at the About tab to show you this probe is indeed running 6.1 software. Remember, you're going to need 6.1 or above to enable SRT monitoring. OK, let's now set up an encrypted stream. Remember, the listener has to be up and running first. 
I'm going to enter a passphrase, which is basically just a string of characters. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's the same in both the caller and the listener. Going now to the PC, I need to add this passphrase to the command line of TS Duck. The passphrase itself needs to be enclosed in quotes. And that's it. Setting AES encryption is as simple as that. The Nomad uses the passphrase to decrypt the SRT streams and everything is exactly the same as before. Changing the passphrase at either end will halt the SRT stream and it will no longer be received. Here you can see we've lost that stream. As an exercise, I'm going to turn the Intel NUC into a listener. I'm going to set the probe up as a caller. Remember, this doesn't change the direction of the data flow. All it changes is the device that is setting up the stream. So the PC will be waiting for the Nomad to call for the play to start. Now, it doesn't matter which way round you do this, but it is less confusing for the sender to be the caller and the receiver to be the listener. So as my PC is now going to be the listener, all I need is the port number and to change caller to listener. And because this is the listener, I need to set it running first. Back at the probe, I turn the Nomad into the caller and now I need to call a specific IP address. The IP address of the PC, of course. The listener is already listening and now that the Nomad as the caller starts the session, the PC will start sending. And as you can see, it looks exactly the same. Doesn't matter which way round you configure it. So that really is all there is to it. I think you'll agree that once you get your head round the difference between a caller and a listener, then the rest is pretty simple to set up. And as you can see from my particular demo setup, it's very easy to create a very simple lab system and that's really all you need to get to grips with SRT. I think SRT is going to be very significant in the industry and we're going to be seeing a lot of it in the very near future. So it makes sense to be able to be comfortable with setting up an SRT stream and monitoring it because these SRT, these SRT streams are going to be out there and they're going to be they're going to need monitoring. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to SRT and I look forward to talking to you again on my next video.